Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us here on INE Live for a very special cloud focused stream. I'm your host, Catherine Brown, and today we are talking with Mike Pfeiffer, founder of CloudSkills.io. If you've been following INE over the last couple of weeks, you have no doubt heard that name and heard the exciting news uh, that INE has acquired CloudSkills.io, bringing in a number of new uh, ventures into the INE family, and of course, bringing Mike Pfeiffer into the family, which we are all super excited about. Today, we're talking with Mike about some of the specifics of the new cloud content coming down the pike and how we are using those courses to really enhance the learning process. We're getting down and dirty, getting into the nitty gritty today and gonna to talk some details and specifics. So get your questions ready first. Uh, wanna give you a couple little notes here as we do each time we stream here on INE Live. Wanna let you know we are streaming live right now across social media platforms, including LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Be sure to like and subscribe on the social media platform you're using so you can stay in the loop when we do go live. We, of course, want you to get involved, want you to talk to us, talk to others. I see chat is uh, jamming this morning. Bob Bob shouting it from the clouds. He says he's ready for this. We've got Faisal from Pakistan. Uh, just uh, chat is jamming today. So keep it coming. Keep your questions coming. We're in for a, a pretty technical stream here. So get those specific questions ready. Mike can answer them. We are monitoring chat. Just one quick note. If you have a question, do us a favor, drop a cue in the beginning of it. So as we're looking through these comments and everything, we can find those questions easily and try to get to those. Uh, with that, I will bring in Mike Pfeiffer. Mike, thanks for joining us today. Hey, Catherine, it's good to be back. Super excited to be here. It feels like we were just here a couple of days ago. I guess kind of it, we were, right? So it, it uh, almost does seem like we were here just two days ago, you and I. But yes, we we were. <laughs> but yeah, Mike, we're uh, we're we're tapping Mike heavily for INE Live this month because we are going in super hard on cloud, and we're we have so many exciting things coming. Uh, you know, coming down the road over the next few weeks and months. Um, quick background on Mike, for those who don't know, as I mentioned, Mike uh, founded CloudSkills.io in 2016. Before that, he was with Amazon Web Services as well as Microsoft. Mike has written six books, created over 35 uh, online courses, trained more than a half million students and developed the CloudSkills.fm podcast, which he still does on a weekly basis. Somehow, he manages to squeeze in a couple INE lives and is now the director of cloud content uh, with INE. So Mike, you are a busy guy these days. Yeah, it's a good thing I have such an awesome team helping me out here because you know it's really hard to do all this stuff. And uh, you know, I'm lucky to have um, your support and everybody at INE, but also the cloud team. Um, it's going to be an exciting year for all of us. And uh, yeah, I'm just like elated, super excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. So today I'm excited to share some of the courses that came over from cloud skills as part of the acquisition. And I'll be talking a little bit about roadmap today. And, um, and what I hope to do is answer a lot of questions. So I want to inter introduce people that already, you know, have I and E uh, subscription to know what content is in there that's come across from cloud skills, but also let you know what we're doing um, this year. And I think that you guys will be really excited. So kind of an early discussion on the cloud roadmap, and then we'll have some announcements coming real soon. So it's going to be awesome. Super excited. Yeah, we have we have some uh, some cool announcements coming in the next uh, couple weeks and months. Um, we have alluded to, we've mentioned over the past few months, cloud certifications that uh, we are getting very very close to releasing. So stay tuned for more information on that. Mike, um, just want to kind of turn it over to you if you can if you can give us a a broad and then a um, you know drill down on some of the specifics of these new cloud courses that are coming through. I'm going to be monitoring chat. You take it away, and then I'm going to call some of these questions together and then lay them on you. Perfect. All right. I'm going to go ahead and share out my screen and I'm actually jump over to the INE platform. I'm going to show you a couple of courses. Actually, I'm going to show you um, three that I think will um, really tackle a lot of low hanging fruit, like of things that people want to learn. And, uh, and then I'll get into like all the courses and how you find them. Okay. So number one, this one I like to start off with because we just did an update on this one late last year over at Cloud Skills. This is the Cloud Native DevOps Bootcamp, and this one we covered both Azure and AWS. And uh, so, a little background for you: when we uh, we first started Cloud Skills, the one of the first um, like internet offers, like consumer facing offers, where it wasn't uh, you know us working in a conference room of a business or something. We had a DevOps Bootcamp, and that was really all Cloud Skills was in the very beginning. 
Um, it's a different version of this one. Uh, this is a newer one we're looking at here. But back in those days, we were, um, you know, we wanted to teach DevOps because it's super important, but there's a lot of people that weren't ready for that, right? So um, a lot of people are still learning the foundations of cloud. A lot of people are still figuring out, you know, scripting languages and getting comfortable with, uh, you know, kind of taking software practices and applying them to infrastructure. So the idea with this bootcamp that you're looking at, this really is a 200 level introduction to DevOps on Azure and AWS. And we kind of took the approach of, you know, what you see here on the screen, it says, you know, learn this stuff by building 46 projects. These were follow along projects, but I envision us here at INE, you know, as we continue to build out the lab platform, these will be things that you'll be able to do right in the console. Um, so for example, let me kind of take it down here. And, and this was a multi-week bootcamp. So, you know, the first week there's some lectures, but when it gets into the projects, these are very similar, like scenario based um, type of lessons where you could follow along with it if you like. Right. So the first week we covered DevOps foundations uh, and fundamental skills. And if you take a look, you know, we just kind of kick things off from a high level. And um, the cool part is you don't have to be a programmer. You don't have to even be a cloud engineer yet. The whole point of this boot camp was to get you familiar with what teams are doing to apply DevOps practices to their cloud infrastructure. And uh, so anyways, first week's kind of just like getting started on the foundations, the backstory, how did we get here? What are some things you need to think about? And we just get into it from there. You know, it's very hands-on. Um, like, and, and one of the things that we talked about with this one was even though you may not be a scripter or a developer, you know, we frame it in a way where we just want you to get some exposure so you know what the tools and services are. You can go run some scripts that we've already created and you start to get a feel for it, right? So it's a lot more uh, of a deeper experience than, you know, just sitting back and, and having somebody like me read slides to you, right? You want to actually uh, run some of this stuff yourself. So that was the idea, right? So we did some scripting. You can see in this week on week two, you know, we did PowerShell and Python. We talked about documenting code. You know, so that was pretty fun. And uh, I think, you know, basically what we do throughout this boot camp, I don't like to read every line, but infrastructure as code, you know, people are talking about infrastructure as code uh, like crazy, right? Because when you get into the cloud, now that everything's virtualized, it just makes sense for you to be able to treat your cloud infrastructure just like it's a software project. And uh, one of the things I'm looking forward to doing here at i &E is um, building this lab experiences where you can get into things like GitHub and source control and really learn how to work uh, on projects with other people on the team. Uh, this is a very important concept. You guys probably hear about GitHub all the time and Git and uh, source control, version control, all those things. And again, it's just basically templatizing your infrastructure and code, and then you can collaborate with your teammates on it. And uh, you know, this is going to be something that if you're not already feeling this in your job, right, it's going to come down hill eventually because as the cloud continues to innovate and get better and better, um, it's just going to enable more experiences where everything is stored in a central location, right? And uh, the infrastructure code is there. The uh, changes from one version to a next are all tracked. We see who changed what, when, and uh, it's very clear, you know, like what happened. So. Uh, that's a big deal. And I'm looking forward to doing some collaborative projects going forward when we build out more uh, lab infrastructure and, and scenarios. Um, in this course, we get into CICD, again, 200th level, but it's really just giving you a feel for what teams are doing. This is a huge concept. You know, most, uh, most cloud work, right, is done via a continuous delivery pipeline. It's just, you know, updating infrastructure and and it's fascinating, right? So if you haven't gotten into that, I think you really enjoy week five. And going on from there, you know, we hit things that are emerging like serverless, which <laughs> a lot of times people uh, don't like that term, right? Because there's actually a server somewhere, but the idea is uh, for developers that are building apps and even for infrastructure people that need compute uh, horsepower without having a server sitting there. Uh, these are serverless functions and it's a big, very big deal. Um, in a lot of different scenarios, not only for uh, web applications and things like that, but also when you're automating, um, for example, maybe uh, I spin something up and I want to make sure that I've got some kind of automated control that goes and tags an instance when it comes online or things like that. And uh, you, it gives you a lot of ways to customize and tap into your deployment process and run all kinds of automation in addition to just using it for the back end for web applications.
So I know I'm going kind of fast, but I, I'm excited about this course and I wanted to kind of pause there and see if there was any uh, questions or comments coming through. Yeah, uh, Mike, we have a couple questions. Um, the, the first one, and um, this comes from Colby Hansen, and I want to ask this specifically because uh, Colby, I know I saw uh, your comment coming in earlier that you are a beginner and uh, you know, you're know you um, just getting into this. So um, first of all, we're super excited that you are getting into this, that you're choosing I&E. &E. Um, and so Colby asks, will these new courses be beginner friendly or is it more advanced? That's a great question. Yeah, this is an advanced topic. You know, usually what I tell people is that it's going to be very difficult to come in to your IT career and land a DevOps job right off the bat. And usually it's, you know, requires a couple years of experience at least. However, um, this is a good course to kind of get a, a bird's eye view. And I would, I would consider this not something where you're trying to memorize and uh and it's definitely aimed at you in a sense where we're not expecting you to have a ton of experience we're just trying to explain the ecosystem when it comes to devops in the cloud um, as we go on and i'll talk a little bit about the cloud roadmap and uh you know, some of the stuff we already have if you're a complete beginner and you really want to go through the very basics of something like just aws and just learn the basics of aws and not worry yet about the devops we have content for that um and we'll have future content for that as well. Um, but this one here is just a nice way to get started to understand the terminology in the industry. What are people like really talking about? So if that's interesting to you, then, you know, you might enjoy this course. I think that probably last year, this was our most popular boot camp that we ran. And it's a combination of live lectures as well as these pre-recorded projects. So awesome question. Yeah, thanks, Colby. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, Darren James watching from the UK today, also asking how um, how to get started and whether cloud training is available on the starter pass. Darren, hopefully that answered your question as well. If not, ping us again and we will uh, we'll, we'll hit Mike up for a more detailed answer and more specific to you. Um, LinkedIn user from Geneva wondering if INE will provide direct access to real cloud sandboxes from AWS, Azure GCP. Yeah, absolutely. So right now we've got uh, lab access for AWS and the, some of the things we'll be releasing pretty soon are going to enable those scenarios where, you know, as you're learning, as you're getting certified, you'll be doing work actually in the AWS console. And, uh, you know, as the months tick by, we're going to be adding capabilities to lab platform and we'll be adding support for Azure and GCP at some point. Right. But um, yeah, I think right now we've, we're really positioned to get people going quickly on AWS and, uh, you know, the other ones will come in time. And uh, yeah, I'm excited about that. So uh, yes, absolutely. Um, that's something that uh, I think that is going to be a big focus for a lot of the content we create going forward. You know, it's going to be very scenario driven and it's going to be very hands on. Yeah. And that is uh, that that's really the ticket and the focus here at INE across verticals, uh, across, um, you know, the entire company is that focus on hands on. Um, which I, I think, Mike, you agree with me, is a real differentiator between what we can offer and what others can. Um, I am not sure how to pronounce his name. I'm going to try Itor Jamatin. Uh, sorry if I butchered that, but uh, asks, are there any plans for OCI in 2022 or mostly sticking to AWS Azure? We'll have to see what happens. Let's see what happens. We're definitely listening to feedback. So um, you know, let us know what you guys would like to see. But it's definitely going to be easy for us to focus on Azure and AWS, especially in the early stages, because those are just so you know commonly used and we're really in there in a deep way as a company, right? So, um, but yeah, we're absolutely listening to feedback from the community and from customers and we'll definitely consider it and weave in things that we can for sure. I want to jump back uh, because um, back to uh, some of the beginners, Damon asked a question, can you recommend some specific classes, some sp specific classes for beginners like myself? Can you, can you recommend like a, a, a specific starting path? Yeah, absolutely. So, I, you know, it kind of depends on your goal, right? Like think about, and we're going to be mapping this out um, for you, right? So you can go down learning paths and certification paths based on a role, but it's kind of, and I'll cover that a little bit today, but Kind of first off, think about, you know, and you might need to do some experimentation before you really make a decision. But, you know, there's cloud engineering, there's development, there's DevOps, where you're kind of knowing the infrastructure as well as the development side and helping 
uh, the teams work together. There's architecture, which, you know, is obviously a, uh, well, maybe not obviously, but architecture is uh, you know, very deep, kind of three, 400 level concept that takes people usually a while to get to. But what I would do is start to think about, you know, what one of those lanes or roles might I like, and then start, you know, reviewing some of the beginner content. Like I said, this course seems like it's an advanced one, but it might be interesting for you to kind of take a look. Um, over here on the far side, if you're in the INE platform and you're under the cloud learning area, you can just find that under discover and go to cloud. You'll see all of our cloud content. And to uh, go back to the question, could I recommend a path? Um, you know, if it's beyond some of the stuff I'm talking about over here on the DevOps one, you can simply come over here to new courses and you'll see that, um, you know, we've got things like DevOps uh, foundations and Kubernetes foundations. Those would be more uh, emerging concepts, right? So things that people are doing in the field that are, um, <clears throat> I would say, you know, <laughs> like hot technology, right? Things that people are having a hard time figuring out and, and working on as a team because it's completely different. Like Kubernetes is, is one of those things. But I also think that, you know, if you're just wanting to start off with the basic cloud, um, general knowledge, our existing learning paths under cloud are great for this. So for example, if we come down here, you know, maybe you're working in a shop where it's a, you know, very Microsoft centric and they're doing Microsoft Azure, you can do INE cloud fundamentals for Azure. That's definitely geared towards, see how it says novice. So there's no expectation that you have any previous knowledge of Azure whatsoever. And we have same thing here for uh, INE fundamentals for AWS, right? Aimed at novices, completely brand new. So those would be good if you're like completely brand new and you don't know anything about cloud. These are awesome. Um, and these ones over here, like this DevOps one is awesome as well. But like I said, it's speaking to advanced concepts in the industry and we're just trying to break it down so you have some, some clarity, right? And some perspective. Now also, you know, kind of going forward, I would say that, um, you know, maybe you like the idea of Kubernetes. You've been hearing about that. Kubernetes is an orchestration system for containers. And you probably heard people talking about containers. If you haven't, it's a, a newer way to run workloads instead of using virtual machines. Kubernetes is kind of like the brains of the operation to make sure you can run containers all over the place. And we did a boot camp here, and this is a course that just came over from Cloud Skills. And uh, this is also one that was updated late last year. This one's from Chad Crowell, and he just takes you through you know, Kubernetes from scratch. So this is for a complete beginner in terms of Kubernetes. So you would probably for this want a little bit of cloud experience. And I think Chad goes through this on the Azure platform. So, you know, if you're already comfortable with things like this, I need cloud fundamentals for Azure. If that's a comfort thing, you already kind of know Azure a little bit, you will probably really enjoy this one because you're going to learn Kubernetes, which is something that everybody's trying to figure out right now. <laughs> so that's a really good one. I'm going to stop there and uh, see if we've got any questions. Nope, I was just messaging you. Uh, go ahead, because I know you wanted to get into some of the details on the Kubernetes. Yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to make sure that I covered this one, because you can see here the difficulty level is novice. So even though it does take you through everything on Azure, um, it's, it's really aimed at somebody that's a total beginner to uh, virtual, or excuse me, containers <laughs> and orchestration. So if you already know VMs, this would be a really good one. It's an eight-week boot camp, and it's very, very project-focused. So it's not like you're wondering, when would I use this technology? We're really showing it to you here. So that's what I wanted to mention on Kubernetes from scratch. And kind of one last note here, and then um, we'll take a look at some questions. You know, Terraform is something that people talk about in the multi-cloud conversation quite a bit, because Terraform is an infrastructure as code platform or tool. And you can use it with Azure, you can use it with AWS, you can use it with GCP. And even though every cloud platform has their own flavor of infrastructure tooling, so for example, like AWS has CloudFormation, that only works on AWS, right? So the cool part about Terraform is it works with Azure, um, AWS, GCP, and other, um, and other things as well. So very nice, right? Very, very nice concept for you. If you learned this, then it's like, hey, I could take my skills and move those over from Azure over to AWS. And uh, we have a Terraform on Azure when it came across uh, with the cloud skills acquisition as well. Uh, one thing I want to note about this course, especially, um, you know, Chad is amazing instructor on Kubernetes from scratch. Luke Oriana is also awesome. Luke is actually a site reliability engineer at Microsoft. And uh, so SRE, site reliability engineer, that's one of the roles, very similar to DevOps. 
um, where that's a new thing, right? And and teams are hiring for that. So Luke's awesome. And if you want to learn you know, infrastructure as code from a true expert, Luke's an awesome guy. So um, those are the main courses that I wanted to cover. There's a lot that's moved over, but <clears throat> excuse me, let, let's open it up for questions and kind of make sure I didn't miss anything there. Yeah, absolutely. So, chat so uh, Sumaya Das asks, uh, could you clarify ACI in VX LAN? Apologies if I completely, good. completely uh, mispronounced that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to speak to container instances real quick. So there's the concept of I could spin up a virtual machine and I could run a Docker container on there or some other uh, container runtime to containerize an app. But I could also um, take that container concept and run it in a managed service in things like Azure Container Instances and AWS has um, Fargate, and, which is another service that's similar. So really the idea is, you know, I want to be able to run a container without a virtual machine. There's a ton of services for that. But, um, you know, going into it in further depth than that, I think is going to take us a little bit too far into the weeds. But that's kind of the idea. So from a cloud perspective, you're, you're always looking for ways to make it e as easy as possible if you can. And managed services is always one way to do that, which means AWS or Azure or Google or whoever is doing all the heavy lifting for you. And you're just focusing on the app and getting that to run properly. Awesome question. Yeah, good question. Good answer, Mike. Um, all right, Stephen asks, will there be a course for cloud security like CCSP from ISC2 or SCXYZ search from Microsoft? That's a good question. We were actually just talking about that yesterday. So I'll come back to that when we talk about kind of high level on the cloud roadmap, but I, I absolutely hope and expect that we'll have a specialty certification around cloud security that is going to touch the flavors of cloud. And so AWS, Azure, and so forth. Um, we've got a lot of work to do probably before we uh, to get the specialties, but we'll see what happens because obviously security is paramount and we're pretty good at that here. So, so we'll yeah, see. And a, 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 a pretty, pretty exciting roadmap coming, coming down in the next few months. Yeah. Um, so Stephen, thanks for the question. And I would say, uh, I would say stay tuned and don't, don't get too far yeah. away from us. Um, all right, Faisal, I think we answered your question uh, about needing recommendations for where to start in DevOps. Larry Esparza asks, are all of the existing vendor specific courses in the same format as this bootcamp? And I assume referring to the bootcamp that you were mentioning, you were showing. Not, right? all of, not all of them. There's a variety of different formats. Some of them are just strictly project focused and real short. Some of them are longer. So, but there is vendor specific content. So there is things that we just cover Azure. So like the one I was talking about Terraform on Azure, that's strictly Azure. There's a Terraform on AWS version as well. Um, so yeah, absolutely. And on that note, I'm ready to um, kind of bring up my, I have one slide today. So I've never been a fan of that. <laughs> I've just got one slide, so I promise I won't take too long. But I'm going to switch over to the slide real quick and just talk a little bit about these upcoming certification paths. And uh, as mentioned earlier, you know, we're going to do a formal announcement talking about our certifications and stuff, but this is what my team is working on right now. And these are not the names of the certifications or anything like that. These are more like job roles that we'll be uh, building content for. So the cloud associate level is really kind of a 100 level, um, you know, associate, somebody that's coming in completely brand new that doesn't have any perspective. And maybe they're not even an engineer. Maybe they're somebody in pre-sales or project management. Uh, program management or somebody else inside the organization that needs to understand and sit in meetings and be able to speak cloud, that would be what cloud associate is going to help you with. And, uh, you know, when we do these certifications, we've been talking about this, this is going to be something where not only you're answering questions, but you're going to be tasked with hands-on validation. And at the 100 level, you know, it's going to be what you would expect, very high level, just to make sure that, you know, you can kind of understand the landscape and communicate about cloud, okay? So 100 level cloud associate, we'll have a certification for that. And then kind of the plan right now is to make sure that we've got vendor specific versions of these certs. So cloud associate will cover kind of multiple clouds, but as we get into things like cloud engineer, you know, it's uh, <clears throat> a job role that's emerging in the field. You know, people are hiring cloud support engineers, cloud administrators, cloud engineers. And so it's kind of like a general purpose uh, role, right? It's really emerging. And uh, so we'll have a cloud engineer path that will be, you know, your administration scenario, your engineering scenario. This is going to be more of a 200 level uh, set of content. And again, 
you know, we'll have individ we'll have some vendor specific content there. And then you'll also be able to get certified up to multi-cloud. So these will all feed up to a multi-cloud certification. Uh, cloud architect at the 300 level, which takes a couple more years to get up to usually, right? And then cloud DevOps engineer, you could also probably consider that maybe uh, some SRE type of content in there as well. And same idea, right? So we're going to have certifications in the DevOps space as well as architecture and all that kind of stuff that hit the vendors, but also feed up the multi-cloud eventually. So you'll be able to kind of work through certs as you, you know, collect uh, multiple clouds, I should say, like, for example, cloud engineer, kind of become an AWS cloud engineer. And if you want to go multi-cloud and you can also become an Azure engineer and, you know, take one of our scenario driven uh, certifications. So these are going to be insanely cool. And the content that we're building for these as well is uh, going to be very scenario driven. You know, it's not going to be just telling you about concepts. It's going to be breaking it down through scenarios and kind of like mini projects. So there will be context as to why am I doing this with this service? Like, when would I ever use this? And I think that's a big thing that's missing um, in the training and education space here in tech. You know, it's a lot of times it's easy to just kind of explain from a high level and, and give you a bunch of facts. But when do I actually put this together and how do I do that? So it's kind of the difference between memorizing and then being able to think through to create solutions, which is what hiring managers need. So anyways, I'm excited about this. This is uh, something that we're going to be spending a lot of time on. It's going to be something that we'll have more details later. And like I said, a lot of this stuff is uh, in early infancy, but we got our first certification. It's going to be announced very soon. So it's going to be awesome. Super excited. Any questions out there? I'm so glad to hear you talk about the, these upcoming paths and the upcoming certifications. And again, great tease on that. Stay tuned for more details. Um, I know we're making making a lot of promises, but if you've been with us for a while, you know that we always deliver on our promises. So um, a super exciting time. I feel like I'm overusing the word exciting, but like I yeah. can't think of another word that you know encompasses where we are uh, as a company right now and, and how we all feel. Um, just so optimistic and um, excited about the future. So uh, forgive the overuse word of excited, but super excited. All right. Um, hey, Servette Bozeslan, okay, survey maybe, asks, um, and I just want to get to this quick question, what would be the core suggestions in order for a network engineer who's aiming for cloud networking and security? Do you have any advice on uh, the path that one should take there? Yeah, somebody that just wants to do networking only and security? Yeah, it looks like uh, a network engineer who's aiming for cloud networking and security. Got it. Yeah, we do actually have a course in, in the library right now that came over with the uh, cloud skills acquisition. And that one was um, networking on Azure. And that was actually built on top of a vendor certification specific to Microsoft Azure. Um, and like I said, we were just talking about this yesterday, talking about a, a specialty certification paths as well. So right now we do have tons of networking content. We've got cloud networking content. But in terms of building out an end-to-end -end certification path, um, that's something that, you know, we'll spend time on here. So we might have at some point a cloud network engineer uh, kind of cert path. But if you uh, take a look at the second bullet point that I have on the slide, if that's still up, the cloud engineer and architect certifications are going to hammer you on networking. So, you know, one of my recommendations would be to follow one of those paths first. And then later, if, if um, you want to go deeper into the networking, there'll be a specialty for that potentially, but there's going to be tons of networking and cloud engineer and cloud architect. So that's where I would focus my time because those certifications are going to serve you very well in the job market, regardless of the role, uh, whether you're network or storage or security or whatnot. A great question. Yeah, great, great question. Great answer, Mike. Well, I, you know, as you were talking, just to jump back, as you were talking about um, all these new offerings and these new opportunities that, that are coming down and all of this, uh, reliance on the real world scenarios. I was thinking, you know, this this lab platform. If you've used the, if you've gotten a chance to get your hands on the new lab platform at INE, um, you know, it is it is absolutely game changing. But that's really what's what's helping to unlock this path and make that possible, right, Mike? That's very true. Yeah, it's very hard to um, to go deep on those scenarios when you can't just hand somebody a sandbox. And we. Uh, that's one of the things that we struggled with a little bit at CloudSkills. There were certain times that we would do boot camps and live events and 
and other courses where we would get people access to Azure and AWS in a limited way, but it was never deep enough. And it was always like too constrained. You know, you really couldn't go and do what you really need to do in real life. And uh, now that we got um, lab platform here up and running and we've got already amazing set of labs, uh, we're excited to build more on top of that and also write code that will validate what you're doing, which is completely game changing. So Travis Johnson, with a quick follow up to the certification, asks, would these, this is a great question, by the way, would these certs be a better option instead of going CompTIA route or should I do both? Yeah, that's a good question. I would say that, you know, I don't want to speak for our marketing team or anything like that, but I think from an economics perspective that you might find um, or might be a little bit more economical. Um, CompTIA is an awesome organization. I actually, my very first certification was in 1999. I was A-plus certified from CompTIA. So yeah, I love them. Um, I think that if, if you're looking to just kind of show that you know vendor neutral, but you don't really have any um, depth on a specific cloud platform, that's a good place to start. But if you really want to go into the job market and be able to you know, kind of represent that, yes, I know the fundamentals, but I can also get my hands on Azure and AWS, that's going to go a long way. Yeah, that's part of um, I and E strength. I think just in general is not only a breadth of of knowledge and learning, um, but also an incredible depth. Um, so that that certainly reflects along there. Mike, I know you wanted to get to some details about the upcoming I and E cloud roadmap overall. Um, do you want to go into some of that? Um, you know, some of, some of what else is lying ahead. Yeah, I, I'm sure for 100%. I think um, <clears throat> I might have jumped ahead a little bit on you there. I kind of covered some of that here. Um, that's kind of what I'm speaking to here. And like I said, we still have to name these, but there's definitely the cloud associate. We're going to announce this one soon and uh, very soon. And that one will be a certification where not only do you answer questions, multiple choice, but you'll be doing hands on to validate that you know what you're doing. And then from there, the cloud engineer one will be the one that comes out next. And that's going to be originally, or excuse me, initially AWS focus, but then there will be another path for Azure later and for GCP eventually, right? So the idea is that as you walk down this path, starting you know after Cloud Associate, when you hit engineer or architect or DevOps, that's gonna be a place where you're, you're developing mastery on one or more platforms. And ideally, you know, if you follow our path all the way, you'll take these up to a multi-cloud certification. So imagine a scenario where you're, you know, you go through these architect paths and you have this, you know, you study for a while, you really build up your skills. And at the end, you do this insanely cool, very complex, multi-cloud scenario driven certification hands-on test, right? And um, the stories that you'll be able to tell based on all that work in an interview is gonna blow the minds of any hiring manager I know, because I would, you know, if I was listening to somebody that had gone through that, what we're planning, I would be very excited to have them on my team. Awesome. Uh, all right, Colby asks, are the labs based on real world scenarios? We covered that a little bit, but just to reiterate that, absolutely, yes, Colby. Uh, once you get involved with these labs, you will be able to do that in the real world. That's uh, that's the bread and butter of our instruction. Um, not only yep. you know preparing you to memorize and pass a test, but preparing you to actually do your job um, yep. in the real world. Uh, Mike, anything you want to to say to the crowd um, kind of before we we wrap this up, anything you want to make sure that people know about what's coming uh, down the pike? At Absolutely. With cloud? Yeah, I think probably the biggest takeaway from this one is, you know, we've got in the industry, we, we've got a lot of things coming at us. And I think it's OK to just kind of start before you feel like you're ready, you know, because like I said earlier on the show, getting started to get some clarity about what you actually like about these potential roles that might really drive your direction. And so I would say be open to, you know, maybe doing, let me switch back to my uh, other screen where I was showing the portal and everything. You know, I really believe like one of these ones here, um, even if it might feel a little bit too advanced, is worth diving into to just see what you feel about it. And so that's my kind of closing message, Catherine, is kind of start before you're ready, be okay with experimenting and because we're all having to do that. But I think that if you're open and you kind of dive into something, maybe uh, before you feel like you're a bit ready, I think you might be in a scenario, you might surprise yourself, right? So um, keep an open mind 
and keep watching the show because we'll we'll guide you guys, uh, everybody that needs to, the guidance. We'll keep uh, putting it out. So really appreciate everybody being here and the questions today. Great, uh, great message, Mike, and great questions today. Thank you so much. Um, and as always, you know, just to, to follow up on what Mike said, you know, as you're going through this, if you have questions, if you just have, you know, general thoughts, we are all over the place on INE Live. We're here at least once, twice a week. Uh, we've got Mike in, like, Mike, I know it probably feels like you're here every single day <laughs> during the month of January, at least, and probably February too, so block off your calendar um, for that. But, you know, we've, we've always got people here ready and willing to answer your questions and help you along your journey. So, Mike, thank you again for being here. Uh, that is going to wrap up today's stream. Thanks for watching. If you missed it live, you can look for the replay across our social media channels and on the INE website. That'll be available immediately after we sign off here. We will be live again next Tuesday, January 25th for another special stream featuring Mike as well as INE's newest instructor, Matt Davis, to talk more about cloud trends in business and what INE is doing specifically to move toward a well-rounded experience in cloud outside of the primary cloud platform. So that'll be a really interesting topic and hope you can join us for that. Be sure to like and subscribe on the social media platform you're using so you can stay in the loop when we do go live and for details on our next stream, as always, Bring your questions, your comments, and your enthusiasm. We'll see you next time. Until then, have a great week.